Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this week's supply and demand for us in gold fundamental and technical analysis. And uh, getting into the week ahead, uh, 13th of February. So, it's a trading economics um, website, tradingeconomics.com. So, if you want to click on there, uh, go to that website, you'll be able to read really the in depth um, analysis as to what is being expected in the market and what is potentially coming up. But I'll just read the, uh, the summary, which is the US uh, economic calendar will be dominated by the inflation rate, producer prices, retail sales, and several speeches by the Fed officials. Also, consumer prices index, retail sales, and labor data will be released in the UK. Elsewhere, investors will follow uh, Q4 GDP growth for Japan. Uh, and uh, fresh inflation rates for uh, Switzerland and interest rate decisions in the Philippines and Indonesia. So um, some uh, some some decent data coming out, I guess, potential market moving. But again, especially for really um, the, the US as well as the UK and Japan. Those are probably the main uh, data points. I think there is something to do with the euro talks about elsewhere in Europe second estimates oh second estimates so like to confirm the euro area economy uh, recorded a marginal 0.1% GDP growth in the, in the in Q4 so second estimates really aren't the most important GDP growth figures it's really the uh, the first or preliminary ones that you really want to watch out for and so uh, let's get into uh, the technicals and some of some more in-depth fundamentals uh, looking at the dollar index so the dollar index uh, technically uh, the dollar is at really a kind of like a, a bit of a turning point um, fundamentally and it's really because at the moment you have investors bracing for risk uh, inflation dooms uh, bonds to bear market right so let me read that again investors brace for risk inflation dooms bond uh, bonds to bear market and surprise hot CPI print may extend uh, route triggered by jobs data and rates traders place option bets that target six percent fed policy peak so what does that all mean um in terms of um inflation uh, and the dollar um if inflation goes higher then the fed will be probably forced to be able to to actually hike rates for a bit longer which means that will have to be priced in which will mean that dollar will you know uh, uh, is likely to go higher or appreciate in value um, because uh, hiking rates typically appreciates a currency and the Fed are looking to fight inflation and so um, with that you know bonds are connected uh, to, to inflation they're very insensitive to inflation in fact um, really if you're trading currencies you should actually also be looking at um, you know uh, treasury bonds or gilt in the UK as well and so um, because they are really um, linked it's really called intermarket analysis and that's the study between uh, different asset classes and how, and how they're you know linked and so investors are bracing for key inflation data next week that could worsen the bond market route but we're not necessarily um, focusing on the, on the bond market too much because we know the ex what the expectation and what that actually means and so it talks about the reversal would come on the heels of a blowout January jobs report data that sent bonds tumbling since afterwards uh, Federal Reserve officials conveyed that the in the inflation battle is not over and it may take longer for the central bank to achieve price stability it would also dash hopes that inflation would remain in a downward trend and view uh, sorry a view that sparked a rally in treasuries last month so ultimately exactly what I said in terms of um, you know the Federal Reserve having to fight inflation by hiking rates a bit more and a bit longer right which would and should send prices going higher but that all depends on whether CPI comes out higher than expected because if it doesn't if it just remains as is or actually comes out a bit lower then um, that means that the Fed won't, won't have to hike rates as much or you know the end their hiking cycle and you probably see the dollar start to you know come to the to the downside now uh, the expectation is actually um, for um, inflation to um, you know still continue on its way down but there is obviously a uh, surprise that could happen we've had uh, plenty of surprises right um, especially the jobs market but let's see what happens here at the moment 
dollar index um, again my bias though is still really to the short side dollar unless we really do have um, some a, a big surprise on CPI and if we do have a big surprise on CPI um, then in the short term I probably will start to look for uh, dollar buys at least in the short term but in but for now and if it comes out as expected and uh, you know rates uh, CPI comes out lower then my bias is still more to the downside so a bit of a tricky situation it's uh, again data dependent and so uh, again if you want to be uh, short at the moment then I'd probably say uh, from a confluence perspective uh, this is decent because we're at a supply zone so it could start to drift to the downside if you're looking at buys and buying on the dollar um, then you would look for prices to come down to that demand zone the 102s 101 area and then look for any kind of buys on the uh, you know dollar crosses like the dollar yen dollar swiss um, on to the dollar yen uh, again you know the previous analysis talking about the dollar really applies to pretty much all pairs because the market has to price in uh, the new uh, interest rates if inflation does come out higher which means that um, if the dollar starts to go higher right after CPI then you're looking at um, any pullbacks really being buying opportunities and um, but if not any uh, uh, pullbacks to the uh, to, to buy the to buy the yen are actually shorting opportunities and again my bias at currently until the data really comes out at least over the medium to long term is to go long on the Japanese yen I do think the yen dollar yen is going to go lower over the next you know three to six months it might pull back obviously you know in the short term but if it does I think those are definitely decent uh, shorting opportunities on the uh, dollar yen uh, dollar Swiss similar thing uh, in terms of uh, dollar um, analysis again um, thinking to be to be a buyer of the dollar you're really looking for a pullback into that 95 50s sorry uh, 91 50s or 91 round number before looking at getting long uh, if you're looking to get um, short and think that the Swiss franc is a bargain anywhere around here me personally I think I'd rather look for a fresher area of uh, supply and uh, looking where the uh, f moving fair value is yeah way above that moving monthly moving fair value and so um, yeah I think probably around the 9450s 94s I think would be a decent area to look for any kind of short trades um, that I'd be looking for even better would be the 96 95 areas but I'm not really trading this pair but if you are really those are the areas that you're looking for uh, dollar CAD and the dollar CAD the Canadian dollar had some decent news on employment um, or unemployment I think it was or was it employment actually it was employment that came out actually weighted better than expected um, but the, but the Canadian dollar uh, uh, the Bank of Canada were not looking to hike rates anytime soon so as positive as the news was I still expect the Canadian dollar to um, to weaken or be one of the central banks that uh, um, uh, I would trade against and so the Canadian dollar um, uh, not necessarily against the US dollar but if I think you know if I'm looking to trade the for example the Aussie CAD um, I think it's going to go higher but the, the dollar CAD a bit of a tricky one I think for me if I'm looking to buy it would have to be somewhere around the absolute lows these 1.2326 uh, area or if I'm looking to buy uh, the Canadian dollar then it would have to be somewhere around the 135s before looking at getting uh, short but not really a pair again I'm, I'm that interested in unless I think the dollar if the dollar starts to you know is is a um, CPI does come out uh, you know higher than expected then I think in fact if I'm going to buy the, the dollar it will be against the Canadian dollar uh, for sure and this could be actually a really decent uh, buy opportunity if prices drift down here before going higher uh, New Zealand dollar really uh, come down kind of come down to this uh, this demand zone around here kind of you know, say he's broke it it's kind of held a little bit hasn't really kind of gone through it but I'm gonna kind of just get rid of that anyway <clears throat> looking a bit messy um, I would say if you're looking to kind of buy the uh, the New Zealand dollar against the US dollar pull back into that 62 area I think or just below matter of fact I think 60 61 50s I think is, is an even better area to look for any kind of buy trades um, if you're looking for any kind of sell trades at least up to the 60 the highs of this supply zone here which is the 65 uh, 76 area 
for a buy trade. I mean, we do have actually, I can actually move this down, and that is a supply zone as well. So um, the underside of that level, I think, is is, is okay. Um, but I think the better area would be really at the at the absolute highs. Um, but again, not really a pair I'm interested in um, in buying or selling. But uh, the pound dollar is something that is quite interesting. And the pound fundamentally, uh, there was some positive news uh, talking about Britain avoids a recession by the narrowest margin during the strikes. And we had a, you know, strikes kind of started in at the kind of end of November into December. And um, the expectation was for the uh, the UK to enter into a recession. Um, I think the number came out basically at zero. So it avoided um uh, the UK avoided a technical recession. Uh, talking about the figures, leave the UK the only G7 nation to to yet recover from COVID. So we are still behind a lot of other economies. Uh, Jeremy Hunt's figures were better than some feared, and although they were, uh, we are pretty much uh, at the bottom of the table when it comes to um, uh, our, our GDP growth. So it says the UK avoided the recession last year by the narrowest of margins. After the UK, sorry, after the cost of living crisis and industrial action hit the economy during December, gross domestic product was unchanged in the fourth quarter, following a revised 0.2% decline in the, uh, in the previous three months. The Office of National Statistics on, uh, said on Friday, and output in December alone fell 0.5%. So that was, um, you know, uh, uh, quite a big drop, and the figures meant that Britain dodged a back-to-back. -back quarterly contractions, the definition of a technical recession, the economy nonetheless was 0.8% smaller than its size at the end of 2019, making the UK the only group of seven country that has yet to fully recover output loss during the pandemic. So, um, you know, the, the UK economy is very, very fragile. And um, for me, I think uh, overall it continues to be a sell, although um, there is scope for some um, some appreciation for the uh, pound um, in the UK wage and inflation data set to fuel further Bank of England rate hikes. So Bank of England uh, central bank weighs pause uh, in quickest rate hikes in 30 years and signs of wage spiral keep uh, upward pressure on rates. So the UK uh, wage and inflation data this week are likely to, to support arguments from the Bank of England policymakers who were raising rates, adding the quickest surge in borrowing costs in three decades. And so economists expect two separate reports will show that consumer prices are still rising at a double digit pace and companies are, are boosting pay at the quickest pace on records, excluding the year that was distorted by pandemic lockdowns. And so, you know, really, what does that mean? It just means that um, in order to bring inflation down, the Bank of England still have to continue hiking rates. Now, they are, you know, hiking rates in the face of a recession. And so um, when hiking rates, the those rates are yet to be felt in the economy by businesses, uh, you know, borrowers and lenders. And so um, if you keep hiking, what tends to happen is, is that it can have a negative effect on the economy in the future. And so whatever you do now, they have to have one eye on the next six months to a year, because otherwise, if you hike rates too, too much, then, as I said, it has a, a, a it can have a really uh, a contracting effect on on GDP. So as much as, you know, since certain banks want to hike rates, uh, they might not be able to as much as you know they want to simply because um, of the effects of interest rate hikes in the future and um, and so let's see if that remains continues to remain positive or, or appreciate the pound or whether you know the market thinks that in fact by hiking rates um, uh, the UK will go into a deeper recession which is basically what I think and so that's the reason why my bias really is to the short side so with that being said I wouldn't be surprised if prices come back up to you know this area here um but i do expect prices over again uh, the next uh, maybe month or two to still you know want to drift at least down to the 119s if there's a pullback and again it just really depends on um what happens with the with the us dollar as well right um but for now we are in um you know an auction between this high and this low and so um if you do want to do business best places to do businesses right now at the moment are going to be at the lows or at the highs of auctions. 
uh, or what you know traders would term as uh, as ranges and so anything in between that for me i'm not really interested in um doing any kind of business there but i'm definitely watching this this pair it's on the watch list um but i have i've got more of a bias towards buying the dollar than i do uh, the british pound at least in the short term um moving on to the dollar um euro dollar and the euro dollar an interesting one so uh, again uh, we've had some decent news for the um for the dollar recently which is the reason why the um uh, that demand zone uh, didn't really play out as expected and um, we're coming down actually in, into the 106s 105s which is some somewhere where i'm interested in actually buying and so um again i do think that there is scope for prices to come down to this area especially and maybe even down to the 103s especially if cpi comes in uh, higher for the us uh, for the US dollar but ultimately a lot of the banks are um, are pretty much still long on the euro currently against the dollar with uh, 110s the highs as well as you know 115s actually being quoted um, over the next um, you know three to six months and so um, with that being said my bias is still to the long term which basically means that I'm looking for just buy opportunities one direction I'm not looking for you know to buy and sell in in other in you know in both directions um, just looking for pullbacks into what would be considered a bargain for the euro and this is the this is a bargain back in in January because it went made new highs and so is this going to be a bargain again nobody knows but that's really the area that I'm going to be looking for any kind of buy trades, especially if uh, uh, the US CPI comes out as uh, as expected. Now, um, again, the European Central Bank uh, ECB's not says half point rate hike may be needed in May, which is still quite some ground to cover. A Dutch official says and comments add to calls for sustained tough action on inflation. So all central banks really are going through um, uh, high inflation and uh, but the uh, C European Central Bank are one of the uh, most aggressive banks at the moment when it comes to hiking rates again it has to be supported by uh, GDP gross domestic product but as long as they you know they're seen as not entering in, into a recession you know sooner then I think they can afford to be uh, or look to be aggressive in their hiking and so when you have two banks central banks that are still hiking the chances are you don't get a, a, a trending market right you would get more of, a, of, a, of an auction more of an arranging market uh, fair value auction is what it really should be known as um, and so where is price likely to auction from I think it could auction from around the 106s 105s and so that's really where I'm looking to buy if you're looking to short the dollar uh, short the euro dollar then you're really looking for a pullback up into especially those 109s 110s I think is going to be a really nice area to look for technically a short uh, before uh, you know looking to get short there so um, you've got the Aussie US dollar Aussie US dollar again I think this is a decent buy right now I do think that um, again this week is going to be driven by obviously US CPI data and um, it, we could come lower before we go higher but ultimately uh, the Australian dollar for me is a buy simply because of you know China right more risk on um, you know around China and zero, zero COVID policy um, they're also looking to um, the RBA are looking to continue to hike rates as inflation is uh, is high for them as well and so um, there are some buying opportunities in and around this uh, these demand zones here so uh, at the moment you do have demand zones but you also have uh, some support and resistance aiding that as well and that area has been touched several times so I don't necessarily expect it to hold um, and if it does come lower then I think that's going to be a better bargain to look to buy the uh, the um the australian dollar against the us dollar but if you want to go short then you're looking for a pullback up into the 70 50 71 areas before looking at getting uh, short the aussie yen aussie yen is um again a bit of a tricky one um at the moment i think both uh, currencies um are uh, uh, uh appreciating for, for for various different reasons and so um, I do think that you will see, you know, price remain really in in, a, in in an auction between probably this high and this low, 
And so uh, if you are looking to get short um, on the Australian dollar, then I think a pullback into the 93s and just above that would be really the, a, a decent price. So anywhere around there, if you're looking to go long on the Australian dollar against the yen, I think the uh, 89s. But again, not really a pair that I'm interested in. Uh, I might actually remove that from the, uh, from the from the weekly list. I might add something else instead of the uh, Aussie um Aussie, Aussie yen because I don't think for now I'm going to be trading that pair for for a while so um, I'll, I might just remove that and then we've got gold so gold um, obviously you know correlated with uh, the US dollar the dollar's uh, strengthened which means that gold has gone down if uh, CPI uh, comes out higher you would think that you know gold being a hedge against inflation you would expect gold to go higher right but um, it doesn't seem to be working out like that there's a bit of a, uh, a disconnect between uh, just straight inflation and um, and um, uh, and gold at the moment, it just seems to be literally gold, totally driven by you know the the value of the dollar. And so if the dollar starts to continue to appreciate, you can expect gold to devalue, right? But ultimately, these are again buying opportunities. Um, if you're looking to buy gold, so if you missed out on gold on this run up, yeah, then um, you know don't start moaning when prices come down here. And start thinking to yourself, well, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, start buying gold, right? What's what's changed is the uh, is the um, question I'd ask you. If nothing fundamentally has changed, and you think that gold um, is going to go higher, and the dollar is still going to, you know, get weaker over the year, which a lot of banks um, are uh, predicting and forecasting. I shouldn't say predicting, but they're forecasting the dollar to uh, continue to uh, uh, to to devalue over the next, you know, towards the end of the year. Um, then all these pullbacks should be potential buying opportunities. So if you are trading gold, or whether you're just buying the physical, or even you know looking at ETFs, uh, look at a pullback really as a, a, a nice buying opportunity. I think the 50% area, as far as from this low to this high, is really nice. So fair value is going to be around the 17, uh, 88. So that's fair value. So price does come all the way down to this. This area 1817 uh, 80s then I think that's decent for a potential buy too also you've got the added confluence of some uh, support and resistance in that area as well so that's quite nice uh, within that supply uh, sorry within that demand zone if you are looking at getting short then you're looking at a pullback into the 19 um, 28 and then a, a sell trade there and that's believing that the dollar is going to continue to uh, um, strengthen and gold to get weaker anyways guys uh, that's it for this week uh, if you do have any questions uh, please put them in the, uh, the, uh, the the comment section I'll try and get back to uh, any really good questions if I don't get back to your uh, to your questions probably uh, wasn't a great question um, if I don't know it then I don't know it but um, yeah just let me know if you have any questions on, uh, on fundamentals and I can point you to the right videos um, or any analysis in this video anyways guys have a great trading week um, and I'll speak to you until the next video hi my name is Leon Rowe currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and in this video I wanted to answer the question regarding can you swing trade forex successfully without fundamental or risk sentiment analysis and the answer that typically follows that <coughs> from technical analysis traders um, is that all you got to do is follow the trend right so higher highs higher lows in combination with um with trend indicators right so it's just a case of if you see you know uh, something like this occur higher high higher low like that right and you've seen this happen all you got to do is get in on a um a pullback right and then that's really what you're looking to do and as long as whatever said indicator is you know whether it's a moving average whether it's some sort of Elliott wave you know uh you know a b c d wave or one two three four five then um, that's pretty much all you need to do. But I would then ask the question, well, how do you know if the trend is likely to continue? Because, you know, trends don't continue, for, continue forever, right? You might see the trend, and what happens is, with, especially with swing trading, um, you know, on, on something like a daily time frame chart and looking out, 
traders will see the trend after it's made uh, maybe about, you know, maybe a 500, 600, 800 pip move. And then all of a sudden, then they want to start jumping in on the pullback, right? And prices might pull back. But, you know, how are you going to, you know, know whether that's likely to continue? Yeah, likely to continue because ultimately that's what you're what you're gambling on. And um, also, how do you know whether uh, price is pulling back or if it's actually the beginning of a, uh, a reversal? Right, because you have situations where you can have um, you know pullbacks, complex pullbacks, if you want to call it complex pullback, but a pullback that might look something like this. And it might bounce off of there and then maybe, you know, come down to maybe something like this, maybe a demand zone down there. And then all of a sudden we made lower highs, lower lows. Traders might think, oh, well, that's, you know, this is, is this a reverse or is this just a, just a deep pullback, right? And then you might see, you know, prices start to make new highs or even prices might come down even deeper, right? To something like a 61.8% FIB, right? How do you know whether prices, that's just a deep pullback or in fact, that is a reversal? Yeah. Um, and so it's very, very difficult to just tell from price. And you wouldn't be watching this video if you didn't have those same questions. Right. And so, you know, for your information, price does not move simply for the sake of moving. Right. Buyers and sellers within the Forex market or any market, right, any asset class, buyers and sellers don't buy and sell assets in large quantities for no, absolutely no reason. You know, that's <laughs> to, to have a market that just people are speculating on without no sort of um, concept of, of value is, um, you know, is, is, is crazy to me. It's, it doesn't exist. Right. You have to have when you have a market, there has to be uh, value associated with that market and fundamental analysis of any asset uh, class. Uh, is really understanding the current and future potential value of an asset. And so um, what you don't want to do is confuse price with value. Yeah. So assets have varying degrees of cheap or, or, or are varying degrees of cheap, expensive or fair value. Yeah. So, you know, otherwise, if, if price was always indicative of its value, then um, then we would never have an asset that is undervalued or overvalued. We would never have anything that is cheap or expensive because the price is what it is. Um, and, you know, you would just say, well, that's the value, but that doesn't make any sense. So, you know, if uh, if you bought a Ferrari, uh, someone sold you a Ferrari for, for a pound, would you say, well, that's the value of the Ferrari? Um, no, you know intrinsically that the Ferrari has an actual value because uh, fundamental value because of the engineering that's gone into it, the materials that's been used on it, etc. So everything has a value. And so um, price yeah, is not always its value. Right. So um, don't confuse price with value. And in the Forex world, value is determined by interest rates. Yeah. So central bank monetary policy, inflation and GDP, as well as risk sentiment. And this is according to the financial institutions who are doing business in Forex. Right. It's not, you know, Leon Rowe saying this. This is these are the banks that determine the value of um, an exchange rate of a currency, one currency against another, because currencies are trading in pairs. And so, you know, you look at examples like this uh, from, from a bank. This is from MUFG, a uh, Japanese bank. It says the Eurozone rate market has moved to aggressively pair back expectations for further rate hikes. This is the fundamental analysis. So it talks about dovish policy, monetary policy updates for the Bank of Canada, Bank of England and the Fed. The Bank of Canada kicked off the dovish, dovish repricing by pausing their hiking cycle last week. Again, interest rates pausing their hiking cycle. Yeah. So. You know, this is Citibank. So, you know, Citibank say on growth, so GDP, the UK lags uh, with the slowest recovery to pre-pandemic levels of real GDP. Future of UK's business model in a post-Brexit world, talking about the effects of Brexit on GDP. This is another bank. Uh, that talks about, you know, this follows the Bank of England, <coughs> Bank of England in December's meeting, etc., etc. And you can read, you know, them talking about 
why their targets, you know, within the next 12 months versus the euro, the pound versus the euro would be, you know, 0 0.88 cent uh, um, in, that, in that, at that price or that exchange rate, yeah? And it's not to do with, you know, well, price, we're just speculating on, on price and what we see, that, what they see on the chart. Price does play a role, but the value is what drives price over the medium to long term. In the short term, price is really kind of driven by uh, or typically driven by um, uh, liquidity and market makers, etc. And there is speculation, but the market is not for, you know, secondary. Speculation is secondary. The market is really for big businesses like the banks to do business um, and uh, exchange in, in currencies, right? And so fundamental analysis really is trading alongside the financial institutions. If you don't use um, fin um, fundamental analysis when you're swing trading, it's you're basically just flipping a coin and it's probably worse than flipping a coin, right? Because many traders, as you know, swing trading was all it was cracked up to be and the easy as it was, you would, again, you wouldn't be watching this video. So there is definitely something missing in your trading right and it is fundamental analysis and one of the ways just one of the ways um that you can um use uh, i guess the banks and what they release and their fundamental analysis and a bit of a shortcut is to use kind of bank forecasts as as, as a guiding light yeah and so uh many banks uh use uh, or publish their uh, their forecasts they have uh, monthly, quarterly, and these are always constantly updated every every uh, now and then, of course, because things change. But um, what you want to do is use bank forecasts as your guiding light. And I would say, uh, you know, use probably a one to three month time horizon uh, or maybe, you know, a quarter time. Uh, to, to, to two quarters as your as your um, as your guiding light yeah as your um, as your guide so um, that way you know that even if you don't necessarily fully understand the fundamentals which I highly recommend you do um, the banks are actually showing you or telling or forecasting what they think is going to happen with that exchange rate now does it mean that, you know, they're going to be 100% right all the time? No, no one has a crystal ball. Um, and these are forecasts. Forecasts are not predictions. There's a difference. Forecasting is not predicting. Predicting deals with uh, absolutes. You know, I predict that tomorrow it's going to rain. And if it doesn't rain, then I'm wrong. Forecasting is what is likely to happen, the probability of something happening, right? We're just forecasting. The weather is a forecast, right? We forecast the weather because the weather can be, you know, is ever-changing. And um, and that's why we call it a forecast. Anyways, so what you want to do is find um, as many as you can um, bank forecasts, um, don't you know? Go with the with, with the uh, the majority. Don't go with just one or two. Uh, go with maybe if you find ten or fifteen, and then maybe you know maybe ten of those fifteen are saying that they forecast uh, the euro dollar to go higher. For example, then you go with the majority. This isn't you know this is this is opposite to for example retail <laughs> trading where if most of retail are saying that they are short on the euro dollar, then you might want to go long. The banks. Typically, you know, the, the, uh, create the market and so um, and they're doing business. And so the majority of the banks are typically not wrong. Right. They're not wrong. They can be, of course, but they're typically not wrong. So, you will, you know, as a rule of thumb, you want to go with the majority of, you know, the forecasts. And so what you want to do is zoom out on a daily or, you know, potentially weekly chart. And then look where current price is relative to the forecasts, yeah? And so uh, this is an example of the Euro uh, British Pound where um, you have the forecast. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just go back to the uh, Euro Pound. And we saw a, for example, a forecast on the um, Euro Pound right here for the first quarter uh, we had a um, uh, an, an exchange rate forecast of 0 0.89. In the second quarter, we still have, you know, 0 0.89. And then it looks like it's going maybe, you know, um, about 100 pips higher, right? So we have at least two quarters where we should be at the 0 0.89s at some point. So then 
on a price chart, what you want to do is look at where you are relative to the um, to the forecast at the time, right? So if you're at 0 0.89, yeah, at the time of taking the trade, which is right here, yeah, then then you know that you probably don't want to, you know, take that trade anywhere around there. But let's say, for example, you're around the 0 0.87s, then you know that you've got at least uh, a few hundred pips to two and a half, uh, to 250 pips, you know, to the upside, yeah, if prices come down, right? Because ultimately, this is seen as the potential for a bargain if this is seen as the forecast of where prices may be. Yeah, so you want to look at where you are, yeah, in relation to the current uh, forecast as well as the upcoming forecasts. Yeah, and so that is really kind of a bit of a, a shortcut way to understand, you know, whether you're going to be on the right side of the market uh, or not. Yeah, um, but again, not, you know, you, you must I say again, but please note that not all bank forecasts, you know, are going to be up to date or relevant. And so it's still important that you understand current fundamental and risk sentiment analysis because data changes and risk events uh, do occur, right? So there are surprises in the market with data. There are risk events, you know, who could have predicted COVID? Who could have predicted the Ukraine war? Um, there are things that come out who could have predicted the Chinese uh, balloon, right? Um, and whether that has an effect on... on um, on uh, prices in, in the US dollar. Um, at the moment, it doesn't look like it is, but um, you have to have your finger on the pulse. Don't just blindly follow forecasts. Of course, it's a nice guide, it's an aid, it's some confluence, but if you don't understand the reasons why, then you know you might get caught out because if something changes in the market and you're going on um, maybe the forecast from you know from last week, then you're probably going to get caught up because you're not aware of the changes. The data needs to still support that narrative. And so when swing trading, what you want to do is look at the daily really as your um, as your overall um, you know to look where you are and you're doing your overall analysis and then swing trading doesn't mean that you 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 know you can't go down into the lower time frames and look for an entry whether it's the one hour whether it's the four hour if you have custom time frame charts you can go to six to the eight to the ten etc and look for your um, your entries or if you just want to trade you know at the end of the day because you have a busy day with family work etc then that's fine too yeah the entry doesn't really matter of it only really matters in terms of, you know, your potential um, risk reward, right? And your upside potential. But ultimately, if you've got a good two, three hundred pips to the upside, and maybe you're only risking 50, 60, 70 pips, um, then, um, you know, that's still good risk reward. And so profit targets, you know, to be based on either the bank forecasts coming, you know, true and correct and then being correct or just simply good risk reward, right? You might want to take it off, take some profit off just before you get to, um, you know, the bank forecasts, right? If you're up a certain amount, show your stops, however you manage uh, the trade or choose to manage the trade. And so, you know, swing trading, Forex successfully with fundamental risk sentiment analysis. You know, the reason why you use fundamental analysis is to recognize when, you know, exchange rates really are cheap. Yeah. And to get in, you can get in at the beginning of a potential trend. And also obviously uh, looking at where the banks are uh, forecasting, where price is and um, your directional bias, which is, you know, first and foremost, what you really want to understand or what your directional bias should be. And uh, also as well, fundamentals gives you understanding, you know, deep fundamentals, not just forecasts, but understanding the deep fundamentals um, gives you the confidence to hold trades for longer and you're less likely to take profits early, right? What's the point in taking uh, profits if you know that the fundamentals are in your favor and is likely to move, um, you know, maybe a thousand pips in your direction at some point, right? 
you know you don't want to look at your account and say well i'm up by two to one and then i want to just want to take you know profit that doesn't make any sense when you know what you want to do is ride the wave and ride the coattails of the of the banks um, and it's very hard to do that without understanding um, the fundamentals if you're just trading price and hoping and praying again you're pretty much in the wilderness price is not going to tell you where where you know, forecast where price is going. Indicators might be right, but they're only right simply because the banks, um, you know, the banks are saying that, you know, prices will go in that direction. And as a result, the indicators are looking at price and if and then price is going higher, excellent. The indicator looks like it's working, but ultimately those people who are technical traders don't understand. In fact, it wasn't the indicator that was right. It was the fact that they were, you know, inadvertently or unknowingly uh, uh, on the side with the uh, with the banks, right? Because the banks create the market and they are the ones that are going to uh, move price in you know, the direction, whether it's going to trend or whether it's going to range or what is known as a fair value auction. And so also recognize, you know, it's important to recognize when using fundamentals and fundamentals can help you recognize when price is likely to be um uh, a, a reversal or a, or just a pullback right so again data changes and so you might get in on a trend not knowing that fundamentally in fact um, there's been a total uh, 180 in monetary policy and now it's become a uh, uh, you know the, the market is moving against you so for example you could be on a you know see a really nice trend and then you could be thinking to yourself oh, I'm going to get in on this uh, this this area here this is a nicer uh, demand zone but not knowing that in fact at this point in time yeah maybe the, the 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 european central bank the ecb have surprised the market yeah and said oh well you know we're we're gonna start uh cutting rates instead of hiking rates right and then you're thinking to yourself well the trend is still up the trend is still up right and i'm gonna buy here when you should really understand that there's no technical level in the world that's going to work against fundamentals none absolutely you might get a small little bounce but ultimately this is now turning into you can have confidence if you understand the fundamentals this is going to turn into a, a total reversal rather than just looking at pullbacks and this is how traders get caught at levels you know day in day out week in week out because they don't understand the uh, the fundamental side of things and the risk sentiment side of things as well. Um, and so also as well, the number of trades you take does not equate to the amount of profit you'll make. Swing trading uh, should never be looked at as a bad thing just because you take maybe, you know, four or five trades a month doesn't mean you're going to make any less money than someone who takes four, 40 or 50 trades a month, right? It doesn't really matter because somebody can take, you know, 100 trades that month and break even or even lose. You could take, you know, one or two trades that month and have and both of those trades could be winning trades. So the number of trades you take does not equate to the amount of profit you'll make. So don't think that swing trading um, is any less profitable than um, something like day trading. And if you want fundamental analysis, mentoring and a lot more, uh, visit trading180.com. Hope this helps and uh, love to hear your feedback on it. Uh, take care, guys, and uh, speak soon.